is up YouTube? Welcome to today's video. We're going to go over exactly how you can add these three or four items to your build and convert any build to magic find and get way more loot than you could ever dream of. If you ever dreamed of getting a bunch of scares or a bunch of cards or whatever, now here's your chance. Look at this. Me just walking around in a cemetery, killing a rare mob and everything explodes and a billion scarabs appear on the screen. Only brought to you by a little bit of magic finding here and there. Now we're going to go over exactly what you need to do and how item quantity and rarity actually works. Now, if you remember back in 3.19 announcement, GGG said that note that magic find has diminishing returns. So a small investment can go a long way and also get your magic find characters ready. So I'm going to show you exactly how you can do that and what items you can put on almost every single character. At every league I play, I'm tempted to gut my character's power and convert it into a magic finder. I don't really know why. It is probably just because I like finding a lot of items as it is an ARPG. Now, not every single mode is like this. We know that we have a ruthless mode where you actually find almost no items. Now, we do want to scale our quantity and rarity. And one of the main things about Magic Find is that a lot of the mapping materials are priced with Magic Find in mind. And we're looking at the Enraged Strongbox Sexton, 8 modifier maps. So finding more items is definitely fun. And a lot of the farm does revolve around it. Or the mapping entry points does require you to have some level of Magic Find. Now we want to understand how do item drops actually work. So there's two different stats that modify item drops. And it is increased item quantity and increased item rarity. And item quantity is simple enough. It just affects the amount of items that drop in total. Now item rarity is just affecting the rarity of the item. Now there's three sources of item rarity and item quantity. It's the player, and this includes your gear, like Ventors, Goldworm, or your skill points or your passives. And it includes the monsters, the bosses, and the hidden arch nemesis modifiers, so some rares have way more item rarity or quantity than other rares. And we can also include the map bonus to this because the maps affect the monsters. So the map, every single map you'll see has a total amount of quantity or rarity attached to it. And lastly, there's party bonuses. So grouping up is overpowered. I think groups get around a 50% quant bonus to currency and then a 10% quant bonus to all items. And this is all additively stacking. So all of the monster and party bonuses stack additively together and then all of the player bonuses stack additively together and then you multiply the player quant and rarity bonus with the party and monster qu quantity and rarity bonus and that's how you get the formula for how many items or how much items are actually dropping. Now this means that scaling your quant or player quant is really really important even if you think that your map quant is super high. So even though your map quant is like 250% with Wandering Path, your player quant is going to multiply upon that high base value. So it's very, very important to put quant on your gear regardless of how juiced you believe your map is. Now, item rarity affects only finding items. It does not affect any sort of currency drops. And item quantity does affect the amount of currency drops you get along with items. However, item quantity and item rarity both do not affect strongbox slash chest drops. So a lot of people do ask me why even buy the enraged strongbox sextant and run it with magic fine. Now for the enraged strongbox sextant, when you open the strongbox, most of the loot that actually drops is from the monsters that you kill from the strongbox. And those monsters actually still get affected by the item quantity and rarity bonuses. So it does work. Uh, magic find with uh, the enraged strongbox sextant. Now, you also might be wondering should you prioritize item quantity or rarity? If your goal is to find divination cards like Apothecary, like Brother's Gift, the item quantity is all you really need. Now, item quantity does not affect map drops, however, and only the map quant right here affects the map drops. So, item quantity is not going to make you find more 8 mod maps. And item rarity is really good if you want to find a lot of high value T0 and 1 uniques. If you want to find like unnatural instinct, and let's see what I found so far. I found a bunch of stuff, but I've also sold it. I think Void Battery is the last like high tier unique I have. Rapith has been selling for around like one divine for quite a while now. And there's just a little bit of a lot of uniques that you can get that just add to the total amount of your farm. 
Now, item rarity is also good for God Touch Hidden Arch Nemesis rewards. Now, even though they did remove the Loot Goblin in a sort of sense, it's not really fully gone. We just can't see that the mob is actually a Loot Goblin. However, it does have a Hidden Arch Nemesis rewards. And how those Arch Nemesis rewards work is that they convert all of your items to either Currency or Scarabs um, based on their rarity. So if an item is a unique, it has a higher chance of being a Winged Scarab or a Divine Orb. So item rarity does make a difference in terms of that. Now Magic Find does have a diminishing return as it is additive. That means every last bit of quantity you add is not going to be as significant as the first part of the quantity you add. So the first 20% is not going to be as significant when you're at 100% than when you're at 0% quantity. So that's why a tiny bit of Magic Find goes a long way, especially at the start. Now, GGG also has mentioned years ago, back before the game actually officially launched, that they actually added some sort of diminishing returns for item quantity and rarity. And they haven't really said any more about this, but we can kind of assume that it sort of exists. Now, diminishing returns does affect item rarity and it does affect item quantity so that the item gain rate is not too high and abusive. There's also some theories the item quantity doesn't affect some of the super, super rare items as much. So it doesn't mean like if 100% quantity, you're definitely going to get two apothecaries in instead of one over a large sample size. We're not really sure. GGG is usually very, very tight-lipped about any sort of changes to their drop formula. Now, so what are these three or four items that you can easily add to your build that can give you a lot of quantity and rarity without breaking your build? Now, most Magic Find builds do revolve around uniques as it is impossible to roll quantity on rare gear outside of a Shaper Amulet. Now, number one item I usually recommend people to try to fit in is Gold Worm, and this gives 20% quantity on boots. And the reason I recommend this is the sheer amount of quantity. 20% is around the most quantity you can get on a single item, I think. And most people's boot slots are pretty flexible. You don't really need to use your boots. It's not a build-defining slot unless you're playing a strength stacker with replica Alberons. And the boots do have movement speed. You can also corrupt it to have 6% movement speed. So you can see right here, I'm actually using Gold Worm with 20% uh, quantity and also 5% life and regenerate 100 life while moving. So it's super, super good. And it does not break your build, most importantly. Now, a lot of builds also don't really use uh, rings as build-enabling items. And Ventors are actually a very, very good ring because it gives you life and it also gives you a lot of resist. So what you're aiming for on this item is 10% quant and around 30 plus percent rarity. However, this item has a large divine roll, so getting a well-rolled Ventors could be decently expensive. If you want it to be cheaper, you might have to sacrifice some life or resist or a little bit of rarity somewhere. But I highly recommend trying to fit in a Ventors as it should not break your bill, and in some cases, it might even help you resist. Now, Divination Distillate is something that I highly recommend. It's a flash slot. It gives 12% quant and 30% rarity. However, the downside is you have to use Petrified Blood in order to make it work, unless you have the Master Surgeon on the Pathfinder. So the reason why Divination Distillate turns off is because your life reaches full, so since it's a life flask, once it reaches full, the effects end. However, we get around that with the Master Surgeon node, which makes it so that life flask effects are not removed when unreserved life is filled. And in order to simulate Master Surgeons, we have to use the Petrified Blood and reserve around 48% of our life or so, so that we can't recover life to be full. And that's the, what's it called? But it does require that little bit of an aura, and it makes you vulnerable to dots. Now next up, we have Item Rarity Support Gem, and you can just sacrifice a Link if you have enough damage. And then we also have Bisco's Leash, which I highly recommend, especially if you are poor and you don't have a Head Hunter or Mage Blood. So you can basically put on this item over here. And this item is good because it gives you 5% quantity, and it also gives you Rampage, which is a really, really strong buff, especially while clearing. It gives you movement speed and attack speed. And most importantly, it also gives you rarity per 15 Rampage kills. So if you kill 1,000 mobs, you're going to have around like 60% rarity. And I really, really like the item. It's super fun to use. You could even get a quantity implicit on it and get around 9%. Now, next up, we have Gold Flask. If you can sacrifice a Flask slot, this does give you around 60% rarity. And if you can keep your Flask up and you should be able to while mapping the whole time, it is super, super strong. 
Now, this does allow us to get to around 50% quant and 200 to 300% rarity. If you put on Divination Distillate, Gold Worm, Ventors, and maybe a Biscos Leash. So you just choose like three or four, three of those items and see what makes, see what you can make work. And it will drastically increase the amount of loot that you'll find while mapping. Now, there are some things to consider. You have to consider, will adding these items destroy my clear speed? Now, lowering your clear speed by too much of an amount is also a loss of quantity in some sense because you're doing less maps per hour. Now, do you enjoy sacrificing your character power to find more loot? A lot of people like playing a super strong character that never dies. A lot of people like having infinite damage. And it does depend on your threshold of tolerance for maybe dying a little bit for more loot. Now, you also have to consider what type of farm do you enjoy? Since Magic Find does not affect chests, that means that stuff like Expedition, Heist, and Blight does not really benefit that much from Magic Find. So you have to find a farm that you enjoy and something that benefits from it. Now, next up, you have to ask yourself, can you afford Headhunter or Mage Blood? Now, Bisco's Leash is a very, very viable alternative. However, Headhunter or Mage Blood will make your Magic Finder feel a lot smoother. And if you are like putting Legion on the map, with Headhunter, you are going to feel that your build is going to even be able to level up because you are going to be virtually unkillable while still having a bunch of magic find. Now, lastly, you have to consider what build are you playing. Certain builds do benefit from magic find a lot more in the sense that their build doesn't get completely bricked. And these builds include builds that have a really, really good weapon that can carry their damage like KB, Tornado Shot or Lightning Arrow, or it can be some sort of spell that has a lot of high damage already because you can scale the gem levels, whether it's through your weapon or through your amulet. And this does give you, so you can see right here, these are the most popular builds. So CF is also a very, very popular build, especially on Champion. So just keep these things in mind before you fully dive into switching your character over to having some magic find. Now, overall, I am very conflicted about the state of Magic Fight and PoE. I think it is a little bit too restrictive in the sense that there's not that many choices to add quantity, but quantity is really just that strong. The difference between 50% and 0% quantity is absolutely night and day. Just go try it out in some maps and you will notice that you're dropping more currency. Your, uh, what's it called, hidden loot goblin explosions will be a bit better. And it is actually night and day. Now, one thing I could suggest is maybe they can add the item quantity mod back onto rares and make it a very chase mod. So if we actually look at this, some of these standard MF gear in the past, you had 20% quantity. So if you put this item mod value as rare as a like merciless, it could create some nice little min-maxing, especially for a magic find build. Now, let me know down in the comments below if you've tried this before, you added these couple items into your build, if you notice a huge amount of loot. Uh, thanks for watching everyone. I hope you find more mirrors and divines and mage bloods than me. And see you next time. Bye.